So here I am at the visitor center. Uh, hello, my name is Kenny Bowick and I'll be your tour guide here. Uh, just want to welcome you to the Pueblo of Zuni, but I have been uh, the archaeologist for the Pueblo of Zuni for uh, about 28, three quarter years somewhere within. The archaeologist, well, uh, I'm honored. We had, uh, we had a archaeological organization here. Uh, uh, under that firm, basically, I uh, proclamated and mitigated a lot of cultural resource management projects coming in as pertain to economic development. And not only are you an archaeologist, but you say that you're a shaman? Well, I'm a, I'm a priest, uh, uh, shaman to the fire god, Diari. I do come from a lieutenant uh, society division that runs and regulates the system of the Ashiri religion. Okay, and you said the fire god, so does that mean the sun? Well, it, uh, it's a representative of, the, of, of a meteor. Basically. Of a meteor? Yeah, it is. Oh. Uh, the meteor is basically one that evolutionized Mother Earth in her own right. And so, of course, it created a deity god in our own cultural or religious history as it, as it pertains to building Mother Earth. The religion here is still 98% intact. 90% of the community is pro Zuni religion. A lot of our music aren't music, they are stories, folklores, um, you know, uh, creational, or the comings of spirits in rain and pre precipitation attributes. And so, of course, uh, a lot of these are stories that are told. This was a flourishing village, you know, of how we could just before the 1500s, and so 1520 was that initial contact date when a uh, secondary intrusion pretty much began by this African slave. The African slave basically was Esteban Nico, who would have been brought in by a Spanish conquistador named Durantes. Uh, en route to Mexico City, they would capsize uh, these uh, African slave Durantes. Uh, and two other ship uh, mates would uh, survive, make it ashore to the coast of Texas, be held captive by indigenous tribes there for about six to eight years, and then of course they would ultimately escape and venture into this Providence, this southwest, uh, you know, uh, Colorado plateau, and enter into our Providences. Uh, by this time in 1540 would have been a very huge eight-story stacked structure of uh, hundreds of rooms. It was a uh, trade center in the southwest for roads, north, south, east, west, many uh, materials of marine shells and uh, coral from the Texas, Florida coastlines, uh, and even the, the mineral of jade would be found here. And so, of course, this began this great quest for gold. Nobody no. found ever gold, okay. but basically, it will be 20 years later after this African slave would have escaped, uh, you know, the village of Hawiku, he would return to uh, Spain, create this series of seven cities of gold within this new provident district called Cibola. But uh, of course, he would be returning a second time, but would be executed here in the village of Hawiku by our ancestors. And about uh, 1540, July 7th, to be. Uh, 1540 to be exact, would be the initial contact date between the Ashiris of Hawiku uh, and the Spanish conquistador in this village, uh, basically 12 miles to the southwest. We, we utilized in, in gold to a small degree. It was a religious, polynistic uh, sort of sediment. You could, oh, it was. You could grind it down and mix with different minerals like specular hematite or galena and used for face paint, you know, in, in many different uh, ceremonies. So, uh, what is the original name of Well, the, the original name for Zuni is basically Ashiwi. Um, this is an interpretive name, basically, that describes who we are as a people. More or less, uh, the people of the raw, or the people of the clay. So when we were evolutionized from this reptilic form, formation of figure into this consolidated human uh, figure, this is where this name came in properly. Oh, so you were, the story is you were formed out of the clay? And yeah, yeah. Oh. In fact, of course, uh, 
our forms of life becomes from this muck of mud, of, of uh, black sulfuristic smell of mud from natural springs. And how did the spirit get into the clay to make it? Uh, we would be created by two star beings, North Star and the Morning Star. They will basically in, in, uh, more or less uh, uh, in, inject themselves into Mother Earth, into the tomb of Mother Earth, basically, uh, in Ribbon Falls out of the Grand Canyon. This Provident District holds our emergence place at the very base of this natural tomb. It's called the World of the Suit. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, we all, as indigenous Puebloanian tribes of Arizona and New Mexico, oh. all come from the Grand Canyon. Okay, so the Zuni people were uh, peaceful, they were uh, hunters and uh, uh, farmers. farmers. And so, of course, um, they had more or less in, in any sort of intrusions of, of another tribe, you know, negotiations were more the process first. But, of course, we had, you know, place provenance like Chaco Canyon, Mesa Verde, where there were small bands of Zunis who were there that basically had connections with the Plains Indians like the Comanches. So here we are at the, um, this old Pueblo mission. Yeah, Our Lady of Guadalupe. And who built this? Uh, well, the Ashiwi were the labor force that built uh, this uh, facility of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Initial construction of date was 1630. Uh, by about 1635 would have been in full operation by the Spanish conquistadors and missionaries placed here. Of course, it was the labor of the Ashiwi that uh, basically uh, so local constructed. Labor. Yeah, it was local labor, but of course through the supervision of these Spanish missionaries and Catholics. Were there converts, actual converts? Um, yeah, uh, well, you know, there was a... Uh, this was forced labor. Uh -huh. So, uh, of course, initial, the, well, the first church ever to be built was in our village of Hawik, 12 miles to the southwest here. 1629 was the initial construction date for the first ever real church to be built on American soils. It's that of the La Purissima Conception. Uh, basically uh, a heap of rubble now at the village of Hawiku. <laughs> but of course it is still a uh, village in which we can, uh, we, in which uh, tours are still available. So there are no real converts? To no, no, uh, there are uh, not, not here. <laughs> uh, but basically the last real services maybe that it would have had was uh, the late ones, uh, maybe mid 80s, but these were sporadic services, uh, I mean, on just an occasional basis, not regularly. Uh, uh, but really, it would have been abandoned by uh, the Spanish by about 1780, where uh, oh, yeah. this influence of a different force coming in, basically a very early territorial army of well, maybe one of the uh, formulating states, uh, of course, by this time, about 1770, uh, the uh, United States wouldn't have really been a consolidated nation to where territorial armies would venture into our providences, basically giving a, a sort of intimidating uh, factor to the Spanish uh, missionaries who often feel intimidated and basically just uh, voluntarily left. There was a revolt, 1680? Yeah, right. this, uh, of course, this forced labor, this uh, effort of uh, trying to convert the people of, of the New World, basically, uh, uh, led to this rebellious revolt. Of course, it was a Santo Domingo man who was the initiating, uh, driving force to this uh, revolt, but, of course, it was the Pueblonian revolt of 1680 through 1690. Uh, for the Ashiwi, it was a two-of-year hiatus from about 1680 to 1693, basically refuged up to this uh, uh, mesa back here to the southeast of uh, Doayalani. A refuge mesa, basically, this is where that two-of-year hiatus during this Pueblo revolt uh, was more or less uh, utilized. Uh, and so, of course, that uh, is about a mile or two to the southeast 
Uh, we have come out of what is uh, uh, the old Mission Drive. Basically runs right over the main village here. Uh, we'll take a, a right and go down what is Sunshine Street. <laughs> this is the southern section of the cluster of the Pueblo of Zuni. Um, this is um, more or less the, as the road sort of designated the sunny side of the village. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and then of course just off to uh, the left here, this is the Zuni River corridor that runs here. You can see the little bridge here. Of course the bridge that you know, where vehicles cross every day. Uh, basically runs right through the Pueblo here about a, another two miles to the west here and we'll take a southwesterly cut into that valley of Hawik. This is the Christian Reform School. Uh, newly developed or remodified and renovated but of course many additions towards it. Oh and those uh, are ovens. Yeah so. these are horn oil ovens of course placed hundreds of them throughout the course of the village here of course it, it, it will seem that every family has a horn or oven. I wish I had one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In some cases uh, you, you, you do not mess with another lady's oven. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so there used to be a river, water that flows through the river. But yeah. I was told that Somebody damped it off, is that correct? Well, yeah, in, in recent years, let's say maybe 20 years ago, um, there was a prominent water flow. Of course, this uh, feed of water source came in through the uh, Zuni Mountains, just east of here, about 20, 30 miles, uh, with natural springs flowing, feeding off not only the Pueblo of Zuni River, uh, but also places like Pescado and uh, the town of Rima. Uh, just uh, several years ago, maybe 10 years ago, with uh, their own issues in their water rights or uh, orientations, the town of Rema uh, more or less uh, uh, got the agreement to shut off the flow of water into uh, the Zuni River corridor as sort of their own uh, uh, preservation or resource for water. Or basically. And why did you choose doing the tours? Under my experience as an archaeologist going to all of these areas, this came into my mind about 20 years ago where I said, wouldn't it be great to bring folks from many different areas all over the world and introduce them to our rich and complex and diverse history, basically this pathway into what would be the United States starts in the Pueblo of Zuni. and this uh, whole fabrication of the seven cities of gold, which of course um, gave me this great intuition to say one of these days when I finally do retire out of uh, uh, archaeology, cultural resource management, this would be my trait.